Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you off-site because that tremendous windstorm that we had here in Michigan knocked out power to the studio. First principle, the Catholic Church is established personally by the Son of God for the salvation of souls, and there is no other means of salvation apart from the Catholic Church. From that first principle logically falls a primary conclusion. Satan is always working to destroy the Catholic Church precisely because without its presence in the world, all are damned. That neatly sums up the entire truth of human life. Everything else is a footnote. But the footnotes are not without meaning. As we learn more and more that the Democratic Party machine did all it could to undermine the Catholic Church in both Obama's campaigns and the recent Hillary attempt, none of this can surprise us. But we have to go back even more into history to see the plans of modernity begin to become visible. It was a man named Antonio Gramsci, the founder of Italy's Communist Party, who really understood the necessity of destroying the Catholic Church before Marxism could truly rule the world. He maintained that the likes of Stalin and company were wrong in their thinking that capitalism was seen by the masses as their oppressor and all that was needed was to inspire revolution against capitalism. Rather, Gramsci was more cunning and astute than any of them. He correctly intuited that it was not capitalism that needed to be destroyed, but the culture which was seeped in the Catholic faith. Catholicism had to be rooted out of the culture to which it was so deeply wed. Now, to accomplish this, he said Marxism needed to lift a page, get this, from the Jesuits' Counter-Reformation playbook and create what was called a cultura capillare, a capillary culture that would pe penetrate even the tiniest corners of society, like capillaries in your body. While the Bolshevik Marxists were busying themselves with violence and its short-term but limited success, Gramsci's Marxists were playing the much more sophisticated long game of undermining every institution of the West, a broad-based approach over a period of decades, a battle plan that was given its name by a 1960s German Marxist student, Rudi Deutschke, a fan of Gramsci's scheme. Deutschke called it the long, slow march through the institutions. The plan is devastating because it works like a very slowly progressing disease, barely perceptible, but attacking and weakening every organ and primary system of the body. By the time the disease is recognized, it's too late. In Gramsci's view, every institution of the culture had to be invaded and reinvented. Education, the intelligentsia, the arts, the courts, the media, publishing, the military, the government, the family, and ultimately even religion, all with the goal of separating the culture from its Catholic moorings so that it could eventually turn around and destroy the church. His plan has succeeded on a scale not even he could have imagined. Every institution of Western society has been completely unhinged from any sense of Catholic identity. Nowhere was this perhaps more evident than when the European Union produced its constitution and despite deep pleadings from Pope John Paul to recall its Catholic roots, European leaders rejected the idea completely out of hand. What the Pope wanted, a Vatican spokesman said at the time, was, quote, a clear reference to God and the Christian faith to be formulated in the European constitution, closed quote. What Pope St. John Paul may not have been as keenly aware of as he endured the rebuke from leaders, secular leaders, of former Catholic countries was the even more insidious undermining of his own church from within. The institution of the church itself had not escaped Gramsci's master plan, but developing willing accomplices inside the church who shared his world Marxist view was a far sight from easily finding them strewn across the capitals of Europe as they were. The church of the 1920s and pre-World War II Europe was a formidable foe indeed. It's almost unimaginable a hundred years later to understand just how powerful a force the church was in the West just a hundred years ago. However stealth the invasion of the cultural institutions would have to be, such an invasion of the Ecclesia Militans, the church militant, would have to be doubly so. 
a longer, even slower march through the halls of the institutional church would have to be begun in earnest. The seminaries would have to be invaded with the eventual aim of the episcopate. Weaknesses would have to be detected, a lack of vigilance here or there quickly identified, and those sympathetic recruited. First a toehold, then a beachhead, and when the time was right, a breakout from the beachhead in full force. It was the inside operation, the fifth column, to correspond to the frontal assaults from without. The goal was to introduce a complete lack of stability, a giant cultural instability, where it seemed to everyone that everything was changing, all from the past was useless. It has worked like perhaps no other plan in history. An entire world has been transformed in one century with the single goal of destroying the church by both full frontal assault, but even more effectively by undermining from within, by those willing to turn traitor to the truth of Christ. What we are in need of at this critical hour is saints who understand the nitty-gritty detail of this war, the war, and are willing to commit themselves to the lives of re resisting and beating back the enemy. The counter-revolution must now be fought by every faithful Catholic. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.